Thanks for joining us on The Big Story. India's national carrier Air India is losing over 10 crore rupees of taxpayer money every day as some pilots continue to strike work for over a week now. The strike is over a dispute on who would receive training to fly new Boeing 787s. This strike could not have come at a worse time for Air India as the airline struggles for survival with debt skyrocketing to the tune of $8 billion. On The Big Story, we ask, should more... Striking pilots be sacked. Has the Air India Indian Airlines merger failed completely? And is this the beginning of the end for Air India? Let's now go across to my colleague Tanvi Shukla, who's standing by to give us a sense of what this dispute is all about, and more importantly, why is Air India in such a mess? Well, Harsha, it's actually been multiple issues and series of issues which have happened in past five years that has led to the situation today. So let me just go back into the timeline. Prior to the merger in 2005, Indian Airlines then had ordered uh, 43 aircraft, uh, which were Airbuses, and in Air India had ordered about 50 Boeing aircraft. Uh, then in 2007, the government decided that the two airlines, the domestic and the international, should be merged together, and that's what happened. They were merged under the uh, banner of Air India. Now, when the delivery of those airbuses that were ordered by erstwhile Indian Airlines started, it was decided that only pilots of uh, Indian Airlines should be allowed for to train and fly these aircrafts. That obviously did not go down well with the other segment of pilots. Then the IPG also alleges that because of this issue, the erstwhile Indian Airlines pilots were promoted within four years to the grade of a captain, while it took them six to seven years to reach the same position. So clearly there was a disparity in terms of the hierarchy of the entire pilot system. IPG's grievances also includes the fact that the management agreed on, uh, to sign an agreement with the Indian Airlines pilots saying that they will be given a salary raise of about $2,000 per month per pilot. Now, this is at a time when the company is actually bankrupt uh, and you're uh, really giving raises and incentives to pilots, which goes against the regulation, regulations of the entire system. Uh, what really happened is that the management set up a committee of Dharmadikari uh, committee last year and they were supposed to look into the entire uh, problem problem of the integration of Air India and Indian Airlines. That report got submitted in February 2012. Meanwhile, uh, uh, the delivery of the uh, Boeings uh, began to happen, or at least the pilots had to be sent for training. And at that time, the management decided that pilots from both sides should be allowed to go and train for this, which obviously did not go down well with Air India, because the last time it was decided that only one segment of pilots should go for that. And hence, a lot more protests and strikes began. Uh, let's just hear out what the uh, IPG Guild really had to tell us last week when we interacted with them on the issue of the strike. It is something which cannot be just uh, approached by uh, like a bull in a china shop kind of approach. It has to be done by sensible people, it has to be done by professional people, who, and there has to be sincerity and good intentions on both sides. Employees have to be taken into confidence, taken on board, and their apprehensions and issues addressed then only a merger has any chance of success. But that has not happened for the last five years. And uh, to the situation we are in today, today we are talking about is only about a small section of 1,500 pilots between us and the erstwhile Indian Airlines. Tomorrow, when the Dharmadikari report comes out, you have 28,000 employees who are going to be disgruntled and upset. Because one section is getting will be getting a gain, other section will be getting a loss. And at uh, uh, one section gains at the other's expense. So if you really see the entire crux of the issue lies with the fact that now that the Dharmadikari report has been submitted, uh, it may uh, lead to the implementation where there is a uniform pay skill, a uniform hierarchy and a uniform promotion uh, pl plan for both segments of pilots. For past five years, they've actually functioned as two different segments and merging them now is going to be extremely difficult, which is why you should expect to see a lot more protests and a lot more strikes coming up in the future. Meanwhile, the kind of mess that Air India is into. They actually have accumulated losses of about 67,500 crore rupees. This includes uh, losses of about 20,000 crore rupees, then long-term loans for the fleet of about 22,000 crore rupees, working capital loans of about 21,000 crore rupees. Now, just uh, last month, the government has approved the entire restructuring plan for this bankrupt airline, which includes 4,000 crore rupees to be infused into the airline this year itself. Overall, the government will be infusing about 30,000 
crore rupees in the next uh, uh, 9 to 10 years. They have also decided that the working capital loans of about 10,500 crore rupees will be converted into long-term loans at an interest of about 11%. Also, the government guaranteed NCDs will be issued. Now, these will be worth about 7,400 crore rupees. So, this is the entire plan which has been approved by the government as well as uh, the Air India Board. Apart from this, they are obviously looking at some kind of asset monetization also. But while all of this happens, once the merger actually gets implemented based on the Dharmadikari report, we can expect a lot more turbulence and that's exactly what the Civil Aviation Minister is also expecting. Joining us to discuss that, Jitendra Barkar, former Executive Director of Air India and Professor Ravindra Dalakya, member of the Dharmadikari Committee that actually looked into the issues that Air India was facing. Gentlemen, many thanks for joining in. Jitendra, I'll start with you first. You know, what is your own assessment of why the airline is in a mess like this? As we speak, we are hearing of contingency plans that the, that the management is trying to put in place to ensure the, the, you know, the backlog of cancellations are actually being dealt with. But what is the crux of the problem? You see, there, is, there are multifarious problems, to tell you very frankly. The merger took place, and we all know it was hastily done. Then we also know that the HR issues, which had been identified prior to taking a final call on the merger, haven't been addressed. Last five years, you've had several heads of HR in Air India, many of whom with no experience in HR, right? So somebody need to be held guilty, held accountable for what has happened. Mm. Okay, that's one issue. The question is, are pilots justified in going on a strike? Mm. My contention is that at this juncture, with the government of India injecting 30,000 crore of tax-based money, mm. No problem issue is large enough to warrant a strike. Mm. So pilots can be faulted for having gone on strike. Mm. The question, is management equally guilty? The answer is yes. Mm. Why are you trying to take action in such a manner mm. that you don't see a solution in sight even seven days after so the strike. So you agree that the timing of this, this strike is completely uncalled for? Not only the timing. I would say even the issues should have waited the presentation of the Dharma Dikari report. I, I get to the point. You know, in fact, let's get in Professor Dilakya in. Uh, Professor Dilakya, you're part of that Justice Dharma Dikari panel report that sought to integrate the HR structures of Air India and Indian Airlines. What were the recommendations of the panel, number one? And, and had those recommendations been implemented earlier and more effectively, could we have averted this crisis? To be very frank with you, uh, they are still in the process of uh, uh, examining and implementing uh, most of our recommendations. On, on the face of it, we are told that the, the report is practically uh, accepted in total without much of uh, any changes or any kind of uh, exceptions. One or, two, one or two very specific suggestions were a different thing, but otherwise most of it has been accepted by the government. Now, the, the issue is that it has to be really put in practice, and it will, uh, it will only harmonize the entire uh, you know, work conditions, work culture, the seniority problems, the career progression path, the, the level mapping uh, of the employees between the two erstwhile airlines, etc. So these are all the things which will harmonize, no doubt about that. The issue which is right now being raised about the training, I think uh, this is raised because of the, the wrong understanding on the part of the employees and they still carry on. While the company has been merged officially since 1st April 2007, even after five years, people refer to the erstwhile Air India and erstwhile Indian Airlines. And, you know, it is exactly here that uh, the problem is. I would rather say I don't agree nor do I accept the pilots' uh, demand that erstwhile Air India pilots, I don't recognize this uh, set at all. What I say is it is the broad, uh, I mean, it's the wide body pilots versus the narrow body pilots. And the question is, that if we are having the new aircraft coming in, which is a you know dream airline kind of a thing, then the issue is that this kind of aircrafts, I mean, pilots from both uh, the streams, wide body or uh, narrow body, should be 
really considered together for the training purpose. Why should it be only confined to only to one uh, of the streams? You know, Jirendra, he hit the nail on the head. The question is, we've seen mergers in the private sector as well, where companies and employees make a fresh start, that they look at it as a new organization with a completely new DNA. That hasn't happened. Both the management and the pilots believe that there are two silos working within, and each one refers to their own interests and demands. Isn't that a problem? You see, Professor Dolokia is absolutely right. You still refer to Air India as Air India pilots and Indian Airline pilots. And it is not that only the pilots are to blame. Look at what the management has done. Mm. Even they have said 50% of the training trainees for 787 Dreamliner aircraft will come from erstwhile Indian Airlines and 50% from Air, Air India. It's still what treated as two different companies. Yeah, what should have logically been done? Mm. Define the parameters and the specifications that and for eligibility of training. Mm. And whoever from whichever side complies with those kind of parameters, take them for training. Mm. So which means you're basically continuing with the quota system mm. and not trying to merge them. Mm. In my opinion, prior to the merging of training on 787s, mm. why are we not merging the two unions? Mm. Why are unions being allowed to exist separately? Mm. Now, if you look at the whole gamut of kind of issues, delay in setting up a committee to look at all the issues like the Dharmadikari committee right. was set up three and a half years after the merger took place. And only now the report is even being... Now the report has come. Now question is, somebody is to be held guilty. It's easy to say, this is what has gone wrong. Now what is unfortunate part is that in the wake of the 30,000 crore rupee mm. commitment of the government of India, people are questioning, can Air India survive? Now people, the bankers I would say, the bureaucrats, the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs ought to have known mm. that, look, there are inherent, intrinsic problems with Air India. Mm. Management problems, the mm. board constitution, the chief executive appointment, the senior management people, the unions, union flaunting agreements of the 1970s in 2012. So how are you going to run Air India? These are, these are complex issues. You know, uh, the question, Professor Dilakia, is, is this a failed merger? Even the aviation minister admits that this has not worked. Is this a mess because a the business case didn't work, or is this a mess because the merger was not managed well? Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, uh, I uh, if one has to opine, let me tell you, this is a very poorly executed and poorly managed uh, merger. Basically, this merger could have been much better planned and much better implemented, but much better executed. Unfortunately, the things they never happened like that. It was happened in bits and pieces. So the real merger really never took place. Even today, the merger is still on paper. I think it is a, it's a requirement on HR side particularly that you know the, the, the workers should and the employees should forget about the differences between the erstwhile companies and start considering this as a new company. In fact, in, in the Dharmadikari committee, the approach has been exactly this, that we wanted to basically merge the two streams of employees in a perfect manner, where, you know, we would take care of their seniority concerns, their uh, level mapping concerns, their, uh, you know, concerns about the career progression, etc. We have tried our level best to do that. In fact, neither of the companies were eligible for implementing the revised pay scales of given by the Department of Public Enterprise, DPE as we call it. What we said was that when the erstwhile companies who were not making the profits anyway, now when they are merging, I think at that point in time you should have a new entity and the new entity should really follow the DPE guidelines. And as a result, we have really suggested a revision in the pay and pay scales. We have made it in such a way that, I mean, the net financial burden on the company is not there at all. In fact, if at all, it is a, it's a cost neutrality principle, which was one of our uh, terms of reference, we have exactly adhered to that. And given this kind of, you know, it was an it was a intense effort put in by the committee. And what we are finding is, I mean, for no good reason, it has been uh, not properly implemented currently. Just, you know, we understand all these problems at this point in time. It clearly is a series of failures at, at, at the level of the management, at the level of the employees. 
but what is the road ahead? I mean, what, sh what should happen for the taxpayer money to be used effectively for this airline to at least come back on its feet? You see, the government has, while sanctioning 30,000 crore, laid down adherence of certain milestones, mm. on-time performance, load factors, etc. But that's not going to help. Mm. A, the corrective action taken for the management, professional management, all that thing was essential, mm. a, a prerequisite. The second was to tell the employees very categorically, mm. you can't go on strikes. Mm. All the agreements that you've had in the past mm. stand nullified. Mm. And we will start a you're, saying, you're saying that should have been a precondition? That should have been a precondition because if the unions have to quote or flaunt their 1970s, 75 agreements mm. that I must fly first class or I must get this from the company when the company can't afford, mm. don't forget the fact. Mm. All these agreements mm. were signed during a time when Air India was a monopoly player. Right. All of them were signed when management, successive managements had mm. abdicated their right of governing the company to the unions. Right. And unions could get anything out at mm. the cost of Air India. So now, in today's environment, mm. when you have to survive on your own, mm. the market is extremely competitive. Mm. Now, you've got to have work culture which can help Air India transform. Mm. If you don't change the work culture mm. and expect a different result that Air India can survive, mm. it's just not going to happen. The buck stops with the management of Air India, or the buck, does the buck stop with the Minister of Civil Aviation? In my opinion, Civil Aviation Minister, mm. because the management has been changing too frequently. Mm. Since the merger, we have had four chief executives, mm. right? Mm. Who do you hold responsible for it? Are, so, they, are they been allowed to function? Well, they've <laughs> all been IS officials, yeah. and IS officials have always been prone to external pressure right. more easily than a professional in the job. Right. So one can fault. So in my opinion, Civil Aviation Minister ought to be taking decisive action and said, this is what is the roadmap ahead. Mm. To simply say that Air India will turn profitable in 2018 right. is absolutely impossible. I'm willing to stake anything on it. Now, you must have a proper roadmap mm. that this is how we will go about. Mm. Look at the work culture, the one. Right. Look at the age factor in Air India. Right. When you go to the airport, the average age is 45 years plus. Mm. Now, you cannot expect them to deliver mm. the same kind of efficiency which a private airline is. Right. You haven't allowed Air India to induct people for a long time. Mm. Now, what is being money is being given? The, this is also a recommendation that two areas, ground handling and engineering, should be hyped off. Right. Now, it's easier said than done. Correct. Correct. In 2004, eight years ago, we tried exactly this. And none of that has happened. There was total unrest in the company. Mm. So much so all unions ganged up and said, we will not allow this to happen. Mm. So this is why I say prerequisite was to tell the unions, this is how you have managed your work function so far. Right. It can't be allowed anymore because if Air India has to survive, this is critical for it. And more importantly, we can't be ensuring employee survival. Mm. The survival of the airline must precede that mm. because if Air India doesn't survive, employees don't survive. And you can't continue with the past practice, let employees prosper, even if the company makes huge losses. All right. On that not so optimistic note, we've got to wrap up this discussion. Professor Dolar Kej, Bhargav, many thanks for joining us on this debate. That's not the last we've heard on Air India.